If you like Unfound's content, please support this podcast at Patreon, PayPal, or YouTube. Elena Maria Sole Carisi was a 23-year-old from Italy. She had a younger brother and loved to travel. On December 31st, 1993, Elena called her parents from New Orleans, saying that she was checking out of the hotel where she was staying. However, Elena did not say where she was headed next. She was never seen again. Or was she? I'm Ed Denzel, and this is Unfound. Starting way back in 2016 with the disappearance of Joshua Guimond, lakes and ponds, canals and rivers and creeks, or cricks, gulfs and bays, seas and oceans have gotten a lot of attention on Unfound. Did people jump into them? Were people put into them? Should they be searched? Did people accidentally drown in them? Could cars be in them? Here is a very short list of disappearances, if you're not sure what I mean. Tony Schwark, Jake Lachelet, Tiffany Daniels, Ben Archer, J.R. Malahan, Crystal Bailey, The Marco Island Three, The Pickering Six. On and on and on. Many. Or maybe for our new Spanish-speaking listeners, mucho. Well, with the disappearance of Elena Carisi, we are confronted again. But we have an alleged witness this time. What are we supposed to think about the woman in the water? And now a summary of the case. This is brought to you by my friend Megan Lyonez's website, charlieproject.org. Elena Carissi is probably the most famous person ever featured on Unfound. She is both the granddaughter and daughter of people known all over the globe, even to this day. However, Elena did not wish to follow in their footsteps despite being Italy's Vanna White for a short time. She shunned the spotlight and yearned for a regular life. Elena not only talked about, but had begun doing research, actually on site, regarding a book she desired to write concerning the homeless and poor populations of the world. To do this, Elena had traveled to England. South America, and the United States. She had even talked about becoming homeless for a while so as to understand what it's really like. So, on December 31st, 1993, Elena was in New Orleans, but she wasn't alone. Elena had met a much older man, Alexander Masakela, who she thought could help her with her research. On that date, Elena called her parents, saying she was checking out of her hotel where she had been staying since about December 28th. Elena seemed fine, although she did not detail her future plans. She was never seen again. Maybe. Two weeks later, Alexander would try to use Elena's traveler's checks unsuccessfully and got caught. In the meantime... A security guard along the Mississippi River in New Orleans claimed to have seen a woman jump into the river on January 6th who generally fit the description of Elena. This woman was never found. Elena's belongings would later be found at the hotel where she was allegedly checking out. Eyewitnesses and water. A horrible combination. Why? Why? Because people lie and because water doesn't give any signs of whether people went into it or not. Contemplate both of these topics as you also try to answer these three questions during the interview. Number one, if Elena checked out, why was her stuff still at the hotel? 
Number two, could the eyewitness really have seen what he said he saw, given that it was dark and that the river would have taken the woman downstream in a split second? And number three, could Elena's desire to just be one of the crowd have motivated her enough to construct a new life with a new identity? Elena's family is as split as any family I've encountered regarding Elena's disappearance. The guest for this episode is Elena's friend from her teenage years, Mina Spencer. Unfound News. Please be looking for the next Unfound Now on the YouTube channel. Most of you know what I do there. I go over a recent disappearance by looking at the information available, trying to see what we can learn and apply to all the other cases Unfound covers. Next, for all Patreon and YouTube supporters, be looking for the next Found episode. I'll be taking all of you from disappearance to discovery on a case that hopefully will allow us to understand missing people better. Finally, the team episodes have started with this past Monday being my interview with Assistant Carrie. Be looking for the other assistant interviews over the next three weeks. I'm so happy to have on this episode of Unfound one of Elena's best friends, Mina. Mina, welcome to Unfound. Hello. And uh, everybody's going to uh, hear this very uh, quickly that Mina has this uh, very special, very interesting uh, Italian accent that I think everybody's going to enjoy for this episode. We don't have too many people with foreign accents appearing on Unfound, uh, but Italians or uh, accents are probably one of the best ones. So Mina, uh, welcome. Thank you. Let's start here. Uh, you are free to say as much or as little, just maybe a little bit uh, about yourself. And of course, especially how did you and Elena uh, get to know each other? I guess in Italy, but if it was somewhere else, why don't, you, why don't we talk about that first? Okay. So um, it, happened, it, it happens that I was born in the same town where Elena Carrizi uh, was born, actually grew up because, because Elena um, was born in Rome, okay. but, uh, just because by accident. Uh, but she grew up in Cellino San Marco, and that's where I was born and I grew up as well. So mm -hmm. living in this little town... Um, it's very easy to know each other, but in class, uh, Elena Scarizzi's um, mom and dad are a very famous uh, couple that are yeah. singers um, yeah. in Italy. They are, they are very well known, um, mm -hmm. not only in Italy, actually all Europe. Uh, their name are um, Albano Romina Power. Albano is, uh, his last name is Carrizi, that's where, where Elena uh, gets okay. the last. Okay. So I, you know, I used to just um, um, hang out with groups of people that um, knew Ayari. Yari is Elena Carrizi's brother. Okay. Uh, and because of that, I met Elena and we just, you know, used to hang out together and be friends with Yari and Elena at the same time. I uh, used to, mm. you know, have little parties in her village and babysit for um, mm. American families and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. The so so you, you would say then that you got to know Elena at a very young age. Would you say it was six years old, seven years old? What year would you, what, how old would you say no, you were? No, no, I met Elena when I was, uh, uh, I would say, I'm not quite sure about the time because, you know, aging really, it's a bad thing. So <sighs> uh, my memory is pretty bad. But I think it was around uh, when I was 13 years oh, old. Oh, okay. I okay. met Yaki and then uh, <coughs> soon after I met Elena. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we can see each other anymore when we started college. So Elena 
uh, has always been in a foreign college. I mean, uh, not college, sorry, school. School. Uh, okay. Yeah, like elementary, middle school, and uh, high school. Both Yari and Ilenia went to a different country because. I mean, if I have to go a little bit deep into uh, the details and why, is because in the 90, from the 70s through the end of the 80s, yeah. actually middle of 90s, uh, there were there was like um, bad things going on, like mafia, oh. and they, they would kidnap, yeah, uh, right, you know, uh, people, especially kids of famous, you know, mm-hmm. uh, famous kids for ransom you know like yeah. to money so they prefer to keep the kids away from italy for that reason mm-hmm. like from school in you know italian schools so we we saw each other in the summers and you know like uh, holidays uh, but then when mm-hmm. i went to college uh, i went to college in milan and then mm-hmm. elenia and yari went to college in um, uh, london uh, mm-hmm. so we didn't see each other much. Okay, I have to. I have to ask you. As like a thirteen-year-old, you meet this girl Elenia, and her parents are, of course, very, you know, very famous uh, singers. What was that like for you? I mean, to maybe see her, her, maybe her parents on TV, and then like seeing them in person. Was that really kind of weird? Was that a little surreal or what? <laughs> No, because I mean, we are talking about Albano is a very. Um, humble person like uh, mm-hmm. um, he went to school with my dad so this is a very funny story like my father's name was Alberto okay and Albano of course his name is Albano and when they met each other in the town because Albano would come to shop in the town or say hi to his friends or you know classmates very often when they met each other my dad and Albano they would say hi like Albe Alba so, huh. like, you know, yes. like that dialect, yeah. the form, form of a dialect that, uh, you know, uh, it's spoken in Cellino San Marco. So it was my, my dad used to talk uh, to tell us this story all the time. But uh-huh. it was easy to see them in the town very often. Sometimes they would honor the town to sing uh, in the piazza, in the square of yeah. the little town, just, you know, to, I don't know, just say hi to, you know, the to us right. but it wasn't it wasn't like a huge surprise for me seeing them um in person you know okay. it happened very often that actually you know i remember this one time i remember my dad uh, brought me to the village when i say village is uh, because they live they own a really huge property mm. okay which is like the in the countryside of this little town you know okay uh my dad brought me to the play date for with Yari. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. I don't think I seen Elena that day, but uh, he brought me there, and then I I seen Yari, and we were saying we were so excited to see each other to play together. And um, my dad and Albano was there, his dad, and my dad say, "What time you wanted me to pick you up?" And I don't remember. Maybe I maybe I answered a little rude rude say I don't know. You know I don't remember. But Albano mm-hmm. yelled at me. <laughs> he was like, "Don't talk to your father like that." Wow! Wow! <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, he he was a little, you know, a little strict, a little um, authoritarian. Okay. Uh, yeah. Authoritative. I got gotcha. you. All right. And maybe if uh, you know, of course, of course, uh, okay. if for people who maybe don't know her parents, how big were they? Of course, you should. Everybody should know. We're not. Uh, Mina does live in the United States. In fact, she's been here for a while. You know, how would you compare them to like maybe an American or couple like of singing stars or whatever? How big were they at the time? Maybe comparing to some like an American couple. How big were they? Were they like Jay Z and Beyonce or, or or what? What would you say? Um, the popularity. You, yeah. You mean? Right? Yes. Popularity yes. was like Jennifer Lopez or like, uh, very, no. they were in the eye of the camera right. constantly. Okay. Constantly, constantly, yeah. Okay, so like, uh, like of course, this is Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez 2.0 now. They're back together. So you're saying it was something like that, like yeah. that, that, yeah. that much exposure. 
Yes, okay. absolutely. Even there. more. Even more, probably. Yeah. All right, very good. Thank you. Okay, just so everybody explains, talking about Elena's parents. Now, though, Elena, though, herself, she did some work in entertainment as well. Why don't we talk a little bit about that? Of course, that would have been when she was a little bit older, but why don't we talk a little bit about that? She, uh, she did, um, but not much. I think that she was um, <clears throat> encouraged by her parents to mm. kind of... Um, be exposed in this uh, field, but she didn't really like it. She tried, and mm -hmm. uh, she actually didn't like it, and she didn't want to do it anymore. And that's mm -hmm. why the reason of she um, started to mm -hmm. write books. She wanted to be a writer. Yeah. That was a she didn't want to be in TV. Do you, uh, Mina? Do you think this is a situation? Of course, if you ever talk to Elena about uh, that topic, of course, would like to hear at least a bit of it. Was this one of those things where she wanted to, you know, kind of create her own thing for her and maybe thinking like if she stayed in entertainment, she'd always be in her parents' shadow? Or what do you think? Uh, I think I don't know about that, um, what you just say, but mm -hmm. I know that knowing Elena, that's the way I used to know her. She was a um, very... Um, reserved like a, a private person and mm -hmm. shy and she just didn't like to be you know in, on cameras and people I asking see. her questions at the time she just was a uh, very shy and she just didn't like that world she wanted to mm -hmm. be free okay and do her she, own thing she used to say that word like you know i want mm -hmm. to be free like you know libera mm -hmm. libera that she meant by released by the paparazzi and you know right. cameras and you know like um, right. it's easy for us to maybe we say like oh like you you know you had everything the mm -hmm. family and money and uh, popularity and whatever yeah. you know and she was gorgeous but when you actually are in that um in, in that position uh, i remember that she didn't really like much. She wanted to come in the town, but she didn't like it much because she everybody would just look at her. Oh, look oh, at her! Yeah. It's Anna Romina Power's daughter, you know. Mm -hmm. Like uh, she's shopping with the grandma. But those were the things that Elena wanted to do without being new or noticed, you know. Like yeah. going shopping with her grandma, going to you know to the cinema, <laughs> and she did for a while. She did for a while with us, like we were a group of people, friends, like going out, hanging out together. She was dating somebody from um, our, um, you know, age in, in the town. And and then, mm. you know, growing up, she just went to college and we didn't see her anymore. Okay. And I should say one thing that just, she might not have done been in entertainment that long, but one of the things that I, I've seen her doing, she was uh -huh. like doing the... I guess the Italian version of um, uh, what it, Wheel of Fortune, where she was like the, the Vanna, what like the Vanna White position. Yeah, it, that it, was a that was a the show TV TV show that's supposed to you know launch her like. Um, mm -hmm. But she she really didn't like. She it. didn't like I mean, it. it. Okay. No, if you if you watch a few episodes of uh, this uh, TV show, you can tell the way she's very you know like um, not um, not comfortable okay. with the camera. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, and she and you in like you said, she'd even talk to you about this. You know, she she didn't want all no. of the attention maybe that her parents got. Not her parents earned it. Yeah. You know, they're oh, very famous, it. but she that wasn't what she was looking for. Yeah, no, about the attention she always told, but not just me. She told mm -hmm. to other friends as well that she just didn't like to um, be noticed just mm -hmm. because she was, um, you know, mm -hmm. the daughter of a famous cap couple, uh, you know. Right. She wanted to be acknowledged for what, who she was. Right, gotcha. Sounds... Uh, sounds uh very mature to me. Um, you said that she went to, uh, she got her education in England. Do you think that when she went over there, maybe it was a little better? She was maybe a little more anonymous or, or what? What do you think? Uh, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't for long. Mm. She, uh, she was, 
I, she, she was actually a little bit, but uh, she she studied in Switzerland with Yari for a very long while, and oh, okay. then switched to London. And I think yes, when she did that, uh, she wasn't in Italy much more. She they were also traveling a lot with the family. Mm-hmm. Lately, in fact, before she disappeared, she they they were. Um, uh, recording um, L'America Perduta, I think it was called, the, the Lost America, something like that. It was a okay. movie, like a documentary. Okay. Uh, so they've been missing from Italy for a long while. You oh. know, they've been traveling quite a bit. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, she's doing, she's going to education, like you said, getting education in other countries, which I, I don't think is that unusual. Uh, going mm-hmm. to Switzerland, like you said, to London. Um, and were you able to, of course, this is, uh, in the days before email and everything, um, were you able to keep in contact with her? Did you like write letters back and forth? Would you see her when she came back, like on a vacation or a holiday or anything or, or what? No, no, I just, uh, uh, once we went to college, um, I mm-hmm. went to 1990, mm-hmm. uh, we didn't really see each other much. It okay. was just like uh, when I went to visit town because I went to Milan and my town was in Chilino San Marco, which is in the south of Italy. Okay. Um, when it happened, and I went there. Uh, sometimes I see Yari, but not her. Okay. All right. And all right. So you would see Yari, and he, but uh, but you wouldn't see Elena. He was around, but she wasn't. Yeah, no, she wasn't, but I mean, I never questioned, like, you know, why, mm-hmm. I mean, we, I would ask, uh, it, it happened, this is what happened, like, uh, the last time that I was hanging out with Elena, yeah. um, Please. Uh, which I don't remember when this was, I think it was before we left, all left for college, uh, 17, 18, um, she had a party. Mm. I think it was her birth, a birthday, okay. if I'm not wrong. And um, we, we we were like um, doing makeup at our house, um, and she grabbed a little earring, and she said, this is my mom's earring, and I think you should wear it. It was just one earring. And I remember it was like a little, like a little jar, a glass jar, mm. with like a, a different layers of sand, and different different colors inside his jar. Interesting. And um, it was like you know, just like a pendant, like it was a, one earring. And I was like, uh, I don't think so. She was like, oh, you will look nice and whatever. I'm like, okay, I'm wearing this earring. And then you know, we were running, we were dancing at the party and whatever. This earring fell and broke. <laughs> so he, she wasn't really quite mad at me, but she really wasn't happy. So we yeah. didn't talk much okay. <laughs> um, All right. often anymore. She was a little, uh, you know, uh, particular. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Thank you for that story. Okay. So we're getting a good idea about Elena. Grows up in a famous family. We, you know, we can't help who our parents are. And it sounds like she wants to create her own life, maybe uh, out of the spotlight. And, light. and so that takes us uh, to this. You already mentioned this, but uh, I think that this book that she had talked about writing, I think, plays a role somehow in the, the choices that she made after this. What was this book? She talked about writing and the topics and everything. What can you say about that? What is that? So, uh, she wanted to write... Uh, okay, what happened is that um, we we already said that she was going to this college in London. Yeah. King's, uh, King's College, I think it was called. King's okay. School. Yep. Um, and she was uh, one of the best students, one of the top of the year. Wow. And at some point, um, she asked permission to the parents to take um, a break from mm-hmm. school mm-hmm. and travel on her own to write a book about homeless, like uh, living on the street. Wow. Okay. And in order to do that, she wants she wanted to experience experience the the feeling the you know the the real stuff so she wanted to leave like these people probably i don't know she never mm-hmm. said it she never explained she said okay. i just want to take a break in fact she went back from uh london 
to Italy and sold a lot of her own things to support this trip. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. All Because right. The parents were very, <laughs> very <Okay>. happy about. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, yeah. And where did and this is this what brought? So she decided she wanted to do this for whatever reason, uh, her own motivations. And is this the trip that then uh, the first time she went to New Orleans, or where did she go? What can you say about that? No, this was not. No, this wasn't the first time. This was okay. uh, uh, from what I know, might be even more. <laughs> but from what it, you know, we learned mm -hmm. from every was the second time, okay. um, the same year actually. Right. Six months earlier, this trip, uh, the last trip, um, mm -hmm. he was traveling there with her family because okay. of the reason I told you before, the father was uh, recording this movie called The Lost America. Okay. So the, the documentary included the whole family. At that time, Romina Jr., and uh, Crystal were born, so she had two more little sisters with them. Four of uh, four kids, and plus mom and dad. Wow! Went to all around um, America. I think it started in Los Angeles, and then they crossed the country with a um, motorhome. Yeah, an RV. And, and yes, recreational vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, they made it to uh, also. New Orleans, where okay. at this time she met this person. This Alexander. Alexander Masakela, okay. which was a musician, a street musician mm -hmm. of 53 years old. At mm -hmm. that time, Milenia was 23. So we're talking, so just to put this in the timeline very quickly, so... She decides she wants to write this book. She takes off time for her, for her studies. But eventually then, she and her family, uh, all of them, uh, end up in the United States for this movie. And going around the United States in an RV, which sounds like a lot of fun, but they end up in Orleans, New Orleans in 1993. 1993, yeah. 1993. Okay, please continue. So they're there. And what have you learned about that, that trip and her meeting him? Um, okay, I, I, I would like to, uh, to uh, clarify this, though, that Elena wasn't, wasn't writing a book when she was traveling, traveling with her family the first time. Okay. Clearly. She did write a book the second time okay. when she went back to New Orleans. So when she went with the family, she was, uh, they were all excited. Mm-hmm. And this is what the father said. Uh, they were all excited to go with the, you know, to travel with the family and spend some time together and do this thing together. But then mm -hmm. when they when they arrived to New York, New Orleans, I don't know how this happened because it hasn't been told. Okay. She met Masakela. Elena met Alexander Masakela. And mm -hmm. I think the mom and dad were aware of it. The situation mm. that he was like a street musician he was not a good person he you know he was like related mm. to drugs and prostitution stuff like that and they okay. were not happy about this encounter so yeah um okay. it, now so many things have been said that while elena was staying in new orleans the first time this guy was able to almost like uh um uh, Brainwash her. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, please. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I heard that, but, you know, I can't say, like, it's uh, confirmed because they, um, they, I, they, it was, like, um, reported on articles, but mm. I have never heard it from mom and dad's mouth. So, okay. like, not, uh, it, it might be that that was the time that this guy kind of um, brainwashed Elena. And it maybe it, it happened that they exchanged, or she exchanged, and she mm. gave to him her address. Okay. From Chile, like okay. you know, in Italy. All right. I have to. I have to ask you, uh, Mina. Do we have yeah. any idea of how long they were in? Now, I, I realize it sounds to me like she ended up staying in New Orleans a little longer than they did. But how long was this period of time the first time in New Orleans? Do we have any idea about that? A week? A month? No, I don't. It could be, it could be <coughs> weeks. Um, it 
happened also that um, they spent some time, so maybe a few weeks in New Orleans, mm -hmm. but then the parents had to proceed, like they have to uh, continue their journey. Um, right. and they had to reach Florida. Okay. All right. And Kenya didn't want to go. Okay. All right. I don't know. I'm having fun here. You guys go ahead. I'll join you. Something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So what happened is that while Elena was staying there the first time, she joined the parents in Florida in a rush and told the mother that she didn't feel safe in, in uh, New Orleans, that there were two people trying to drag her and kill her. Wow. Yeah. And so and the mother never inquired because they, from Florida, they just went back to Italy. Right. She, she just like, you know, got scared, but she didn't mm. really inquire and, you know, mm. say who or where and whatever. So because the mother thought, okay, she got scared and she will never be back here. Right. So, and, and just so everybody knows, I mean, as a, as a, uh, uh, as a person who lives in Florida, although everybody thinks, well, you know, Louisiana, Florida, that, you know, it's Southeast United States, really Florida and New Orleans are really not that close to each other, especially if. The family's down in Miami or somewhere. I mean, New Orleans is like a 15-hour drive or some, something crazy from Miami. So what, what are the parents supposed to do anyway? She shows up and says, you know, something happened. Well, they're probably just happy that she's there. Exactly, yes. Right. Well, I think they just told the mother. I don't know. She had a better relationship with the mom. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, this. Uh, I don't think this was uh, never discussed. Um, mm hmm from what I understood. They just okay. went back to Italy and didn't even think anymore until the day that, that uh, Elena called back home. Right. Because right. When, she, when she said that she wanted to take a break and travel, she never mentioned New Orleans. She mentioned Belize. Yeah, we're, and we'll get to that, and we'll certainly get to that. Yeah. So she ends up in Florida. Just I have to ask, if you don't know Mina, that's totally fine, but I have to ask, do we have any uh, amount of time, do we know the, the, the number of days that Elena ended up spending by herself in New Orleans before she got out of there and, and made it to Florida? It, was it a couple days, a week? Does anybody yeah, know? Yeah, I think it was a couple of days only. Very you short time. the first time, right? The first time. Yeah, the first herself. time. Yeah, the first time. Yeah, it was only a couple of days. And okay. then she ran to Florida. Okay, very good. Thank mm -hmm. you. So let's move on to this. You And you've already stated it, so we'll go to this. So this is still 1993, but eventually the entire family goes back to Italy, I guess flies back. Yes, they, they go back to Italy. This was, uh, I think uh, the trip was in July. July. So we, it, they, they spent, mm -hmm. Elena spent quite a few months in Italy before deciding to go back. Okay. Um, and, and what went on in Italy? I, I've read, and of course it's right here in the outline that we're following, that Alexander ended up starting sending her letters? No, actually no. No, no. 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 It wasn't quite like sending letters. I think that by the, by the time that the family got back to Italy, the mother uh, mm -hmm. sent a postcard. It was a postcard oh, okay. that she was and she burned it. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. your understanding is it wasn't like a series of letters. This is just an example. Of course, it was something very different. You just say so. But it's not like some guy obsessing on Elena, like getting a letter day after day after day. Nothing like that. No, I don't think so. That wasn't said. That mm -hmm. wasn't stated. Uh, it was just a postcard uh, that the mother found and oh. she got upset. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. to because I think that the mother was really upset because Elena, at this point, she believed that Elena gave, her, gave him the address because right. um, um, you cannot find the couple's or the family's address anywhere. Right, ever. right, because the they're famous. Is they so want, yeah, right. That yeah. it's even like hard for me to pronounce the street. <laughs> so it wasn't. Yeah, it is a really weird name. So okay, okay. to know the address, he, she gave it to him, the address, thinking, I don't know what she was thinking, to be honest, but mm -hmm. um, I'll maybe to keep in touch, you know, something like that. All right. So she, yeah. so like you said, he gave, she gave Alexander her address, and then at some point, 
It wasn't a series of letters. Your understanding is it was just a postcard. It was postcard, yes. Okay. Now, I don't know if, if it was one or maybe more than one, but I, mm. she, they, the parents uh, mentioned only one, and it okay. was uh, destroyed. It was okay. Do we know what that? Uh, do we know what the po postcard said? What did it say? Anything like you know? I really wish you'd come back to the United States, or or what? No, no, they never said. It. Never said. Mm -hmm. All right. So, no. she. I guess uh, what we're saying is Alexander took her up on her offer of you know him sending her a letter or a postcard or something, and that's what he did. That's what he. That that's what he did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's move on now. So this happens, they get back to Italy. And what were the circumstances of now Elena leaving by herself from Italy? What, what do you know about that, Nina? She lived by herself when she was in college, but when she came back to Cellino San Marco, to the town, she lived with her parents. And they, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a little... Um, uh, difficult to explain where they lived to compare. Mm. It was like Disneyland. No, <laughs> it was like um, <coughs> now it is actually because everything changed. They have like you know an aqua park or whatever. But back at that time was like um, it, it was like a little town with uh, let's say 100 people living there. Okay. Or 200 people. Okay. So they had like a little church and then the main house where Albano and Romina used to live, which was like um, fenced. Mm by, you know, um, wall and, uh, and trees mm. and whatever. And then there were small apartments all around where Americans used to live, uh, mm. family of them. And then um, a restaurant and, uh, you know, a pond and animals and trees. And I think his brother mm. had a house, like, you know, a little bit like distant from his house, yeah. uh, but it was everything else. And then this whole village was fenced by another, you know, uh, like by wall. Yeah, pretty secure area. Pre pretty secure, yeah. yeah. There was a gate um, and, you know, uh, but I mean, if somebody wanted to just um, get in, it mm. wasn't that okay. uh, secure. Not not back at that time. Maybe now. Maybe now. Yeah. No. All right. So what about Elena then deciding once again to leave Italy uh, and I guess she went to Belize first. What do you know about that? So what I know about that is that, uh, um, as I said, Elena at some point uh, really wanted to mm, try to live her own life and do something um, that was related to the career, the the job she wanted to do to become a writer and mm -hmm. she to, decided to write a book and this book was about um, people living on the street like homeless people okay. poor homeless people and so she asked the permission to the parents to um, take a break from school from college and travel solo for um, a bit to yeah. have a little bit of a taste of how you know it could be to live mm. on your own yeah. and um, probably on the street at that point you know I'm thinking because she wanted to she was doing the same thing that Masakela was doing when she went mm -hmm. but the, the thing is like she told the parents she was going to Belize um, mm -hmm. and then I, mm -hmm. I don't know when do you want to talk yeah, okay, about. so just so everybody, that's the country of Belize, which is down in, I've been there actually on a cruise, I've actually been to the country of Belize like uh, over 15 years ago, uh, mm -hmm. but it's like in Central uh, America slash South America in that area, which Americans probably only know it from maybe going there on a cruise, so she decided to go there. Yes. She decided to go there, and she that was that was actually her first stop. As I said before, she sold a lot of stuff uh, to be able to support this trip, mm -hmm. um, and I, I think she was traveling with the travel checks and very okay. little cash. Okay. So she went to Belize and stayed there um, only uh, like a few days. Only a few days. At some point, mm -hmm. Yari, her brother, okay. 
because the parents were a little worried, um, but he also loved to travel. He decided to surprise Elena, going to Belize, and surprise her. But when he arrived, she wasn't there. Huh. So because she was in a, she was living, she was staying in a very small village. He asked around door to door, door by door. He knocked and asked about Elena. Mm. Somebody told him she left today, this morning, I think she, they say, mm -hmm. to Mexico. Okay. And, and, what, so, and what did Yari do? Did he try to follow her? Did he try to follow up on that? What did Yari do? No, because he had no idea where to Mexico she mm -hmm. he He didn't know Elena's itinerary, I think. Yeah. So she left and went to Mexico. Now, this I don't know if it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they said, but it, they, they said they went, she went to Mexico. Maybe from Mexico she went back to New Orleans. I have no idea. Okay. But somehow from Mexico she ended up, she went back to New Orleans. And mm -hmm. that was around, the, must have been around the 30 or 28. 29th, maybe. They, they're not sure about the dates because uh, I think the Yari arrived to Belize around the 28th. 28th of, of December? January. 28th of, of December or uh, we have to put I'm this... I'm sorry. Yes, 28th of December 1993. Okay, thank you. So, uh, just so we have to understand something. So... Uh, she did not spend uh, Christmas with her family. She was was she for Christmas? Was she in Belize or did she leave right after that? Do you know? It seems like a a weird choice. To, uh, do, do I have know? been thinking about that, but uh, that wasn't uh, clear. They never said mm -hmm. it. They never said if she left after Christmas or before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm assuming that. She mm -hmm. didn't spend Christmas with her family. I have Unless to. I have to have agree. After, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I have to. You know, I mean, I have to agree with you because we have to realize that a flight from Italy to Belize. I mean, that's an that's like an all day thing. So yeah. you know, I suppose well, you know, I suppose it's possible that as soon as she got there, she started going, you know, to mislead people, and we'll get to that to or New Orleans. But it seems more likely that she really did leave. For Belize before Christmas, which of course is December twenty fifth. Yes. Wow. Exactly. Okay. All right, that's something. And I, I should ask you this. You know, I, I don't think we're uh, uh, anybody is sure of this, but I, I need to bring it up because I, I have seen it out there. There are stories out there that she might have ridden a bus from Belize to New Orleans. Any proof of that, or is that just somebody just well, typing? Well, I, I don't. I don't think it was from Belize to New Orleans because they mm. said in Belize they told Yari, and this has been told many times. Okay. Have been has, this has been said, mentioned many times by the brother <coughs> okay. and the family that um, she was riding the bus from Belize to Mexico. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, okay. not to. Um, not to New Orleans. Okay. But I'm not sure. I, I, this, I don't know. All right, because uh, I guess what we're also saying, if nobody wants to look at a map, I mean, if she was, were to fly from Belize to New Orleans, I mean, that's a pretty short flight. That's a really, it's not a long flight at all. But going by bus, because you have to go the whole way around the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, that is one long bus ride. But you know. That's what I did. I don't really uh, understand the bus thing, but it might have a bit. Okay, if she went to Mexico, she might yeah. have. Uh, maybe she flew to Mexico. I know she has family in Mexico because the grandma was from Mexico, Romina's mom. Okay. So maybe she went to visit family in Mexico and then from Mexico, <coughs> Mexico she flew to New Orleans. Mm. And if not, I think she just uh, flew to New Orleans from Belize. Okay. All right. Just wanted to put that out there. People I know, they're going to hear about this disappearance and look, look into it. And they may run across a story about her riding a bus from Belize to New Orleans, which I don't even, it's probably possible, but that seems like the worst choice of all choices to me. 
Uh, I mean, maybe she, you know what, when, when Yari went to the village, they say she, uh, mm -hmm. she took the bus and went to Mexico, which, which they meant is like, because I've been traveling to countries like that, like Thailand or Jamaica, you take the bus to go to the airport. That's right. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, that's about as far as you take that's the bus. That's what that's right. they meant, you know. Yeah. yeah, that very well could be. Good point, Mina. All right. Mm -hmm. One way or the other, though. She ends up back in New Orleans, and uh, my understanding is that she wasn't exactly uh, forthcoming with that, uh, at least regarding her father, right? She uh, she was kind of uh, trying to hide the fact that she was back in New Orleans, and you know she led her family to believe she was in Belize, but she, really she went back to New Orleans. Yeah. Well, I don't know if she wanted the parents to believe that she was in New Orleans, New Orleans in Belize, but or maybe around, but not in New Orleans, because she apparently the the only call and the last call was made by Elena on January. Uh, why do I keep saying January? That's December right. first. Okay. Which in Italy was already the first. Right. It was January first. Okay. So. She called to wish uh, the family uh, Happy New Year, mm -hmm. and that's when she told Romina that she was in New Orleans, and Romina was surprised. I bet because she was like, "Why? I mean, you 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 were scared. You said that you were not safe there, mm -hmm. and now you went back there." And she was like, "Oh, don't worry, I'll be fine." But I would like to state this. Go ahead. Because that's what Romina said. And I think maybe this hasn't been um, caught by the cops, police, FBI, whatever. I think Elena wanted to check out from the hotel as soon as possible because she told the mother on the phone, I'm not going to give you the phone number of the hotel because I'm going to check out. I'm going to check out. Wow. So okay. this was on the 31st. So okay. we actually don't really know what happened between the 31st and the 6th when they, you know, they think that right. she was seen last and we're, and we're gonna get to we're going to get to that for sure because it's a very important yeah. part of this disappearance as well. So she goes, so to sum this up, she goes to Belize seemingly maybe even before Christmas, uh, spending Christmas on her own away from her family. Somehow she gets to New Orleans. Nobody doubts that. Somehow, one way, they're a bus, plane, or whatever. And she's at this hotel called La, the Ladell. Is that right? Ladell? Uh, Ladell, Ladell. Ladell. L-E-D-A-L-E, -L -E, I think is what it is. Yes. Yeah. And on, so on New Year's Eve, at least New Year's Eve in the United States, December 31st of 1993, she calls her family in Italy. So sometime later in the evening, of course, Italy is how many, being that you are from, originally from Italy, how many hours ahead is Italy from the United States? How many hours different? Well, from uh, Louisiana, I uh, think, it, uh, so where I'm Right, now, central, it's, it's, central time. Right. I have been uh, eight hours. I would say eight hours. I'm, I'm, eight. I can't, I'm not pretty, positive. Yeah. But maybe eight hours. But it was already the first there. Like okay. it was a uh, morning. Yeah. All right. So, so I, well, I guess what I'm saying with you, Mina, is that for her to call, and it's still December 31st here, but it's first there. This had to maybe been early evening or something, like six o'clock or five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock in Louisiana. Something like that. Probably. Yeah. Okay. I don't think the time uh, uh, was specified ever. When okay. she called, okay. but it was a yes. All right, but your understanding but, uh, is she was calling to s just wish them a happy new year. Yes, because in Italy the the fr the January first is actually a celebration, mm -hmm. as much as uh, maybe even more than the thirty first. Wow. But the, the January first, you know, it's, it's a celebration, like a big, uh, it's a holiday, big holiday. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And this phone call, once again, I realize you were not there, but your understanding of it, did uh, Elena sound happy? Did she, I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm guessing they were surprised. Maybe they were a little displeased that she had misled them. But did she well, sound happy? Did she sound like in her right mind? What would you say? What do you know about that? Well, uh, 
I, I don't know if she was in the right mind, but mm. uh, going back through the whole thing, whatever happened, probably not. But uh, from what the father said, Albano stated that she sounded confused and oh. strange. Okay. Strange things, the way she was talking. Uh, okay. But I think, and they, I think they had a little um, argument. I bet. I, I, I think that would be understandable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because the father was very upset. I'm sure he uh, was. No, was uh, New Orleans. And with the mother, um, that w it was a uh, surprise. Uh, Romina was surprised that she went back to New Orleans because what we said before, you know, like yeah. she reminded her and say, you were scared when we went there the first time. Mm -hmm. Ran, ran all away to Florida because you told us that you didn't feel safe and now you went back there and she said, uh, I'm going to be fine again. She said, I'm not going to give it to you, the phone number of the hotel because mm. I'm, anyway, I'm going to check out. She's checking out. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. checking uh, out anyway. Right. And so I want to ask you is once again, I realize you weren't there, but did she give an impression? Did that mean that she was thinking thinking about going back to Italy, she was going to a different American city. Did, did her family get an impression of what she was going to do next? They didn't know. They didn't know. They had no idea, but they probably thought that she was about to um, leave that place. And that's why maybe uh, they didn't uh, uh, act um, sooner yeah. to see if they could. No, but, and I, I don't know, and I don't think that she ever released the name of the hotel mm -hmm. and never give them the phone number. Okay. Because I think now that, you know, seeing from a different perspective, um, yeah. Elenia might have uh, thought that if she released the name of the hotel, as it was like a very disgusting hotel, yeah. parents would have got really worried. I bet. You know, it was like an hotel of twenty dollars a night or something. You know, like right, uh, very dirty. And I think that they showed uh, often uh, at the beginning when this happened the the rooms, the way the the rooms were, and mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty. I mean, myself knowing Elena, when I look at the the video, I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this lady, this girl was sleeping in in this room. Yeah. You know, knowing where she comes from. Yeah, I, 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 I that, get it. That was her intention, you know, to kind of like um, um, confusing herself into, you know, her personality, her image into mm. with these people. But maybe what I'm thinking, because of what she said to her mom, what she told her mom, like, I'm not going to give it to you. This 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 uh, sentence, this phrase, has stayed for me with me for a very long time, and I'm trying to analyze that. Like, yeah. why was she leaving so soon? It means something was wrong, was going bad. Yeah, well, it her, could be she. Theater. Yeah, she's got in. It very well could be simply that she got into that hotel and she had said, like everybody else said, "What the heck am I doing here?" <laughs> Maybe I don't Maybe, know. Well, yeah. okay, you need to say that. When she checked in into this hotel, mm. um, <coughs> I don't know if she told their parents uh, that she was sleeping with the not with her. she was a she was um, sharing the room with Alexander Masakela. She was. Which at that time, yes, at that time Masakela was fifty three, and mm. Elena was twenty three. Yeah. 24, 23, 24. So um, I'm I'm not sure that. She told them that, but I know for a fact um, that she may, she mentioned many times that there was nothing between them. Uh -huh. They were just friends. But I the see. mother was very worried about this artist's of, mind. Of course. Of course. It was twisted, you know, yeah. All right, I guess what we're saying, though, is uh, let's just get right to this. She goes from Belize to back to New Orleans, and seemingly almost immediately... She's back in the company of Alexander. Yes. All right. And not only on top of that, they're sharing a hotel room together. Yes. Okay. All right. And she, and this may be, uh, but 
I need to ask you this. Did Alexander's name even come up during that phone call? Do you know? No. Uh, I don't yeah. think so. All right. She surely didn't say I'm staying. Given what she probably already knew her parents thought of him, she surely wouldn't have said that, right? No, she okay. wouldn't have said that. Okay. All right, so we're going to set that sets us up for later. All right, so I just ask, I have to ask you some questions. Once again, mm -hmm. your understanding, realizing that you were not around her at this time, but any allegations of Elena having any drug use problems during this time, the first trip to the United States, the second trip to Belize, anything, any allegations of any drug use problems? I wouldn't say drugs. I would say just a light... Mm, substance like marijuana. Okay. All right. And, you know, back back in the eighties and nineties was pretty common. All of us. Okay. Well, I, I didn't like it, but uh, I had my mm. friends used to do all the time. Okay. Uh, recreational, nothing like uh, you know, mm, addict or whatever, anything like that. Okay. <laughs> Okay. What about uh, how did how did uh, alcohol and Elena get along? No, no, she didn't drink. Okay, to your knowledge, when in getting to know Elena the way you did, uh, any allegations that she ever talk about suicide, uh, taking her own life, anything like that? Not around me. She never mentioned anything like that. Okay. No. Any mental health issues, any allegations from people who maybe might have been around her more before she went missing, any bipolar issues, depression issues, anything like that? No, we've we never been, um, that was never confirmed by anybody or her or mm -hmm. Elenia. Um, we never noticed anything that she, you know, she was mm -hmm. a little... And like an odd person, very, ah. I would say, just, you know, shy and reserved, but not, nothing like, you know, I think there has been like, a, there was an episode that's been stated, I don't know by who, and I don't know if it's true that Elenia was going, um, she had an episode of uh, psychosis mm -hmm. in uh, New Orleans the first time yeah. that she was there with her mom and dad. Right. And they thought that was related to Massa Kayla. Okay. But this was not confirmed by parents. Mm. I have never heard this saying, uh, you know, uh, this wasn't said by the parents like on TV, on live TV. So okay. I don't know if it's true. But beside that, Elenia was a, a normal mm -hmm. um, 23 years old mm -hmm. girl, like everybody else. Like nothing really, you know, that... Mm -hmm. Nothing very noticeable. I never thought that she was crazy or mentally ill. Okay. Just just a particular personality. That's all. Okay. I guess we're also saying is we have to remember she's the daughter of famous people, and exactly. we know and we know how people will exaggerate, and we know how we have like TMZ and the paparazzi, and they love to create stories too. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that also has to be figured into all of this. And one yeah. more thing, uh, she was not, uh, you already told, she said that she had uh, sold like almost all of her stuff to go on these trips. So she's going to Belize, she's going to the United States all on her own dime. She's paying for her own way. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So she it's did. not like she's globe trotting around the world on her parents' dime. You know, she's not, I guess what we might say, like, I guess maybe your stereotypical you know, daughter of rich people, and so they're just paying for their daughter to just go over, you know, that's not what was going on. She was paying for all this herself. Yes, and I have to, um, I like to make this uh, clear that even like the parents or Elena or Yari never came to town driving big Mercedes or BMWs mm. or any super expensive cars. They, <laughs> actually, Elena was driving like a super Silly uh, Cinquecento from like the 80s with her grandma. Ah. They never thought, like, you know, um, money. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you for adding that in. Okay. Let's move on to this. So now we're following the outline. We get to this. We get to early 1994. Who was it? When was it that finally somebody figured out, you know, something doesn't sound right? You know, we haven't heard from Elena. 
She hasn't contacted anybody. Who was the first person to notice that and, and what can you say about it? Okay, I from what the news and the parents said, uh, the, the, the lady, I think she was the owner of the hotel, she... She said that she noticed that the last time she, she, she has seen Elena was January 6th, but, hmm. but um, the disappearance wasn't reported until January mm -hmm. 14th. Yeah, and, yeah, and so how did that all come about? I mean, yeah. how, did the, how did they make this connection so, finally that Elena's... Uh, the daughter of parents in Italy and that she's yeah. missing. How was that whole entire connection made? Do you even know? So what happened is that uh, uh, this Masakela tried to check out of the hotel with Elenia's travel check, travel checks, huh. and <clears throat> he. I, I believe she showed Elenia's passport to the. Um, the owner of the hotel. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think she accepted that and mm -hmm. he left. Uh, okay. I don't know if he paid the bill. Who paid the bill? I don't know that. It hasn't been told. But he left Elenia's backpack with her. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to come in a few days and pick it up or something like that. She, he left the backpack there. And this lady looked into the backpack and everything, all the belongings, belongings of Elena were there like you know passports and her diary mm. where she was writing the book her notes yeah uh, father checks and everything else clothing mm. and she recognized all of, Elena, of Elena's clothes and so she decided to call the cops wow and do we know what date this was I think I believe it was a January around January 14th so this was like two weeks later after so two weeks after she had last talked to her uh, parents yes. at, on New Year's Eve. It's two weeks later that this happened. Yes. All right. And then uh, somebody called the parents at that time. Okay. And so once again, to kind of also uh, make a connection here, we have to remember what Elena said. She actually said that she was checking out of that hotel on December 31st. But here it is two weeks later, and it's actually Alexander using her travel check, traveler's checks to check out of that hotel. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay, well, that certainly is uh, certainly seems to be a contradiction there. Something going on there uh, that we will come back to. We're going to talk about the traveler's checks and everything here in a bit. So her parents, somebody contacts her parents. So what do your understanding, uh, what do they do? Of course, we're already talking. It's like the middle of January now. What do her parents do? I, these I know because I, um, at that time, I was following everything on TV, uh, and so I know that the parents uh, flew to New Orleans mm -hmm. to look for her and see, <clears throat> you know, what happened to her. And she, they were like uh, asking around, and but at some point mm -hmm. they have been told that right on the sixth, January sixth, a yeah. woman. Um, the, the guardian of the aquarium mm -hmm. in, in New Orleans uh, noticed a woman, the description of Elena, mm -hmm. <clears throat> jumping in the river. Right. So this is, so, and we're going to get in, we're going to cover that more in depth uh, before we're done here. But th so this is something that was already known by the time the parents got to the United States. That there was a security guard who allegedly saw a woman... I guess the general description, we'll get to that, uh, going into the water and the parents found out about this fairly quickly. I think they found out <coughs> when they were here because um, the, the reason I say that is because um, they actually reported mm -hmm. Elenia, uh, Elenia uh, missing in, you know, in New Orleans. And, yeah. Um, they connected the... the oh, FBI. I gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, they connected Elena to this girl. Okay. That jumped in the river. And I think the mother uh, provided a few pictures of Elena. Mm-hmm. And showed it to... Well, actually, 
one picture of Elenia, and then the mm, the Guardian was shown like different uh, pictures of ladies. Mm-hmm. But she, he picked a different lady in the picture and said it wasn't okay. this lady. All right, we're but getting. Then, we'll, then, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. All right, we're going to get to that very much in depth. All right, but. We just want to get, for the timeline purposes, they show up, and it was the police that kind of said, okay, we got this uh, young woman here in New Orleans. She's uh, an Italian citizen. And then we had this guy who reported a woman jumping into the river, the Mississippi River, uh, uh, on January 6th. And the police thought, well, we're thinking this is the same young woman. No, not uh, as quickly as uh, he said that. Okay. Because as I was before, they showed him a few pictures mm-hmm. of different... And in those pictures, Elena was included. Okay. The picture of Elena was included. Okay. But the Guardian didn't say, yes, was this Elena. He said, yes, was this lady. It was another lady, a different okay. lady. I'm, I'm, talking from the, I'm talking from a police point of view. They were the ones that they were thinking maybe this woman that we're looking for from Italy is also the woman that went into the water. I'm not talking about the security guard. I'm just talking about the police. They were the ones that kind of drew this connection that maybe the woman that went into the water was Elena. I don't, I don't know, but I don't think mm. that they, they linked Elena quickly to that lady. Okay. All right. Uh, did, given that this had already happened with Alexander using a traveler's checks, did the police talk to Alexander? And what did he say? He did talk to Alexander and he said that he didn't know where Elenia was, but mm-hmm. he was sure that she was fine. Okay, and we're going to come back to that. All right, so they knew about him. Somehow they were able to find him. Of course, he's in jail, maybe. That's what was, maybe he was easy to find. And uh, I want to go back to this. How did you find out that she was missing? All from the news. Just from the news. Do you, re- do you remember where you were and what you were doing when you first saw it on the news? I was in Milan. You were. I was in Milan into a store and I was listening to the, you know, in the store they always play the radio. Yeah. And they say the news and I freezed. Like I, I couldn't walk and couldn't move and I was like, it was just unbelievable to me. Like mm-hmm. uh, that Elenia was missing because mm-hmm. to us, Elenia, her brother, mom and dad to, to Italy, to the whole entire country, their family. Mm-hmm. It's like Albano and Mina's power are Italy's mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. the way we see them. So it, it was, uh, and of course I could not get in touch with uh, Yari or whatever because they, few, quickly after a few days of uh, being in TV and being interviewed and releasing uh, details, whatever, they mm-hmm. choose the silent. All right. And I, I have to tell you, uh, you know, 1994, I would have been 23 years old. I was living in Pennsylvania still. And I have to admit, I vaguely remember this. It was, it was national news in the United States. I just, oh. ba- you know, of course, this was before the internet and everything. Um, I vaguely remember this. I just vaguely remember hearing about the daughter of a, a famous, mis- uh, famous Italian couple missing, of course, She's also the granddaughter of a very famous American actor, too. Yeah. So I just kind of vaguely remember it being on the news back then. But it does register. It, it does register to me. as This was coverage quite extensively in the United States at the time. Okay, oh. so, so that's, that's how you found out. Um, yeah. I, and I will ask, did you even know that about any of this that we've talked about? Did you know that she had gone with her family to... Were you keeping tabs on her well enough to know that she had gone to the United States with her family or any of that stuff? Yeah, like um, not uh, in details, but vaguely because sometimes I met Yari and I knew that, mm. you know, the trips, like he would tell me like, oh, I'm leaving, you know, going to America, blah, blah. And I wanted to um, underline that uh, Yari and Elenia don't have an accent. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, and that's once again. That's that's something we're gonna get into here as well. You know, as far as identifying her and everything. Surely, uh, you know. And once again, we're just trying to find. We don't, I just want to keep everything as organized as possible because I think this is very yeah, relevant. No, I'm, 
Yeah, I'm not following in anything. I'm just following my heart. So just like, what <laughs> all right. I remember about, you know, uh, we're going to, we're going to get to that. I'm following the outline just to make sure the listeners can make sure they keep everything one at a time. Yes. All right. We don't want to yes. do these too much in a jumbled order. That's why I sent you the outline because we need to keep these things in a certain order that I'm sure in the end will, will make the most sense. All yes. right. And we will get to that. Now I should state something, uh, for, uh, the listeners is that the reason that uh, I'm interviewing Mina and maybe not interviewing her, pa- her parents who are still alive is really her parents really don't do any media appearances regarding Elena's disappearance anymore, do they? No, they don't, they don't want. And also, recently the mother has been interviewed um, in some show. And the father mm. as well, but they do not go into details. They do mm. not tell about they nothing. They only say that the mother says that she really misses her daughter and she thinks that she's alive somewhere. Mm-hmm. And the father said, "I would love to believe that she's alive, mm. but I'm think that she's dead." Okay. So that's just, all they said. Right. So the, anybody's wondering why? Uh, of course, maybe being. Uh, still very famous in Italy. Maybe they're not that easy to reach. Anyway, but that's the reason I'm talking to Mina. They really just don't do, uh, they really don't talk about uh, Elena that much anymore, even though at one time they did. So let's move on to what I will call the rest of the investigation. And let's go back to what you said about the stuff of hers that was left behind. Of course, you're understanding the talking about this backpack. Why don't we talk about that again? You mentioned... Her passport, what else was in there? How much How much clothes did she have? What do you know about that? Not much. Not much because she only left, she left Italy with just, uh, you know, one of those backpacks that uh, tourists um, use, like those uh, long ones, you know, like, um, that's all she had. Okay. Just one backpack. Okay. Yeah. A few pair of shoes and a few clothes and travel checks, her notebook and passport. That was it. And her glasses. Yeah, that's all that was Okay, and, and I guess maybe we're thinking if she was going to have clothes, maybe she was going to just get some clothes along the way. Well, I don't know. We don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, she mm-hmm. really wanted to, um, it, like, um, try to go into this world of the homeless, so I don't mm-hmm. think she really wanted or needed anything. Okay. Uh, you know. Okay. All right, so very minimalist, I guess we might say. Minimalist. Min- yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You did mention, though, and it's right here that I want to ask you about it in the outline, and that is she did have a journal that was in her belongings. Do you happen to know, uh, Mina, what was written in it? What was she talking about? What was she writing about? Not uh, much. Um, the only thing I know is that what the mother <laughs> stated, that uh, she said this many times in the news, that she mentioned Masakela in this book. Did she? Um, notebook. Uh, and uh, she mentioned that Masakela uh, repeatedly told her, like, remember my name, remember me, remember my name. That's what mm-hmm. she, the mother was reading. But we don't know anything else. Okay. Uh, Do you know if that uh, journal, uh, any pages of it have ever been made public since 1994, Mina? No. Okay. I know that maybe the maybe the father mentioned something in his mm. book, maybe, but I'm not positive. I don't think they will ever release anything that is in their uh, okay. notebook. Okay, because you should know, I mean, we've talked about journals quite a bit. I mean, they, it's been a topic on this podcast since 2016, and sometimes pages of a journal are released of a missing person, and sometimes they aren't. That's why, that's why I had to ask. Uh, not Elenia, so if it was, we would have known it. <laughs> like okay. Everybody would have known Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so probably not. And But okay. Alexander, though, was mentioned in it. She wrote about him, your understanding. Uh, could you repeat the question? Absolutely. Uh, but your understanding is that in this journal, she did mention Al- Alexander multiple times. Yes, she, she did. She did. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any allegations that you've ever heard, anything having to do with any violence, him hitting her, raping her, anything like no. that? No. Nothing. Okay. Anything about 
the two of them having sex in the journal. No. You, you haven't heard I, anything? I, even Masakela stated that. Okay. That there was sex. Okay. So I want to ask you this, being that this is, once again, this is something I have to ask, being that it's out there. Where does this whole thing, uh, is it true that that uh, Elena had referred to him as like guru or master or something like that? Is that true or is that just something the paparazzi has created? I don't think that Elena referred to him as such, but that's what he was. The okay. paparazzi say that, but it might mm -hmm. be true because um, I think that they interview other um, people that were connected to him, mm -hmm. and they, but like they, I don't know how to say in English, but it's it was called like magia nera, black um, something like um, I don't know. Yeah, like, I don't know how. Uh, yeah, I don't know any Italian. You should know. I don't know how that like, that translates. Something uh, like the, like dark, like nothing. You know, like. A, not a good uh, vibe. Okay. Uh, when they talked about him, mm -hmm. um, I think Elena seen him as uh, like a somebody that could uh, open to her new doors in the world, like in mm -hmm. life, like something she could learn from him. That's what she probably thought. Okay. All right. Um, okay. That's what, if that's what she thought, that's what she thought. Of course, maybe to most of us it's going to be a little odd, but that seems to be what she was looking for, right? That yeah, maybe. she probably thought that he could teach her something, that, mm. uh, where she could you know, grasp, grasp something for her book or her life or whatever, yeah. but then maybe realize it was not the case. You know, like yeah. it wasn't that way. Yeah. All right. Do we know for this journal, of course, we usually know that journals are maybe at least written daily, you know, maybe people put dates in them. Do we know when the last entry is? No. Don't we don't, know I don't know. Don't know that. No. Okay. Let's move on to this. We've already talked about uh, this postcard that he had sent her, and uh, so we're, we're going to go to this. We're going to go to the traveler's check. So as you've already stated, we just want to go over this again to just make sure everybody understands that yeah. he checked out of the hotel, but this was well after she called her parents on December 31st. Yes. Okay. And he tried to use her traveler's checks, and uh, I guess it had something to do with them not being signed or something. That was the reason they weren't accepted, or the maybe the, the hotel clerk just thought something seems fishy regarding all this. Well, travel checks uh, are not like regular checks. Mm -hmm. That's why they're safe because only the person that uh, owns it, like the name mm -hmm. that is on the travel check, that person can just use right. them. Right. That person. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But maybe because Masakela was uh, a little ignorant, he thought no. it was like, you know, uh, <laughs> they can be used um, regularly. I don't know. I have no idea. But he right. tried. To pay with those um showing her passport as well okay. and that's when they, they, they this was like you know like um ringing the bell like whoa yeah why guys uh, you know trying to do this what is shit mm. so right okay so that's what got him caught do you happen to know um did he spend a lot of time in jail did he plead guilty to this do we know no he didn't play guilty i think that he was a uh, uh, they stopped him to question him mm -hmm. about Elena. Um, he was in uh, not in jail, but he was kept. He was held, um, mm -hmm. but they could not find anything like any proof, so they released him. Okay. Do you happen to know if Alexander ever said the last time he saw Elena? Like, pick a date: December thirty first, January third. No. No. You idea. never say. It. No. Never said. Okay. So that's what's got him in trouble. And, uh, you know, I've tried to look him up, being that he seems to be a very transient guy and everything. I really can't tell if Alexander is still alive here in 2024 or not. And by the way, we are doing this interview on February 15th of 2024. It was just, uh, at this point, 30 years later, it's hard for me to tell whether he's alive or not. Um, probably, probably not, being that he was already in his 50s. In 1994, but maybe. Yeah, he would have been 83 nowadays. Yeah, and uh, yeah, <laughs> right. So 
Yeah. But I know, I know, I I noticed that uh, mm. he stated that he didn't know where Elena was, mm-hmm. but in in Bahi she was fine. That nothing happened to her. And then mm. I also know that uh, after he was released from the police, yeah. um, he disappeared. Nobody ever knew where he was. Huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, just try to, um, maybe I can, um, before this episode comes out, of course we got about a week and a half, or not quite a week and a half, eight days before this comes out to the public on February 16th, or February 23rd, I'm sorry, February 23rd, I'm going to give it another shot to try to track down uh, what his history is, and you know maybe where he was born, and see if he has any other family members, things like that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see if I can do that. All right, moving on to this, and you've already mentioned it, this is a huge part of of this disappearance and it has to do with the security guard at this aquarium I think at the time it might have been called the Aquarium of the Americas but I don't think it's called that now um, please explain the story that this security guard told so uh, the security guard said uh, stated many times that there was a woman sitting on the the age of the, uh, I don't know how you call that. Was it a bench? Like know. a like, like a dock or a little wall dock. right next dock, like right next to the Mississippi River there, something like that. Yeah, with, with her like legs hanging, okay. um, support, like you know hanging down on the river. Okay. Uh, it was eleven p.m., eleven thirty p.m., and she, he said that she looked very sad. She was wearing a dress with maybe flowers, he said, maybe, and a black jacket. And the dress was, he said, the dress was long um, um, to the knees. And uh, apparently he described the shoes too. I didn't know that. But anyway, I don't know what he said about the shoes. I learned about a mother that he described the shoes, but um, blonde. And he... It wasn't very far from her, he said, a couple of meters. And he said, uh, you can't stay here. You need to, you know, step back. And she said, I belong to the water anyway. And she jumped into the river. And then he said that she tried to um, swim, like butterfly style, to the center of the river. Mm -hmm. And then she started maybe to have trouble, trouble maybe. Uh, and then there, there was like a boat uh, passing mm-hmm. by, and it, like a huge wave. Yeah. And she went down and never came back. Like she went down a few times mm-hmm. calling help. But then after the boat uh, created this wave, yeah. she went down and never came back. And he said that, uh, that he called somebody to try to look for her to, mm. you know, search, and they could not find her, and then they called the cops, and then helicopters, that's what he mm. said, I never read anything about that dog. Okay, so your impression, once again, the way you understand it, of course, you've been following Elena's disappearance for like 30 years now, your impression is that this security guard uh, acted upon this pretty quickly, that as soon as he saw something, and of course, he didn't jump in the water after, which I, I'm not going to really question him on that well I, there are a few uh Please. like uh, things that don't uh, click for me like a few details that okay so i've been uh, reading what he said okay the news and what and that and then i also have listened to the mother what she what, what she said on her own mm-hmm. so at first what uh, confuses me is that he was shown like a different uh, um, numbers of pictures of ladies, and okay. Elenia was in these pictures. Yeah. But he didn't pick Elenia first. He said, uh, no, it's this one, and I, I'm pretty sure it's this, this lady. But then that lady, they found out she was alive. It wasn't that girl. Huh. So they came back and they showed to him different pictures of Elenia, mm-hmm. and he said, oh, I think it's her. So he changed his mm-hmm. mind. That was it. Okay, okay. I think it's, it was. 
Okay, so he didn't get it right the first time. He didn't get it the first time, and he might not have gotten it right the second time. Right. So I don't... Uh, if, for, for this person to be confused like that, it means that the light wasn't good. Yeah, it's dark. Or, yeah, it's night. Because yeah. it was dark. Or if there was, like, you know, um, the, the light from the, you know, the lamps, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, maybe he didn't see well. Because I also noticed that he was wearing glasses yeah, and, was. Uh, maybe it was a little far away maybe he didn't see the face very well so that confuses me like he was a confused he was confused the first time and picked another girl was sure 100 mm percent -hmm. but then he, he thinks well, the second time he thought mm -hmm. yes i was you know elaine and then the description of the clothing uh when the mother talked to him didn't match elena and also the hair like mm -hmm. you say that this lady had, um, uh, I think, longer hair, and then and the mother say, no, actually, she had shorter hair. Mm -hmm. And then the shoes didn't match, the description of the shoes. How can you see the shoes, though? I realize, yeah, if she was sitting down and her legs are hanging over, like, over the river, how would he have seen her shoes? I agree with you. Unless and how she... can you see how long was the dress? Yeah, I don't know. To specify that the dress was to the knees. Well, maybe you she know, got up to like stand up on the dock or the wall before she jumped, but that would have been just seconds. Maybe. You know, but that would have been long. like a, a second or two, maybe in the dark of whether how you know how accurate could he be. Maybe. Well, mm -hmm. we don't know how she jumped. He never yeah, said she never stood said up. it. That's right. Never we, said we it. Just jumped. Yeah. And then he said that uh, um, he. Was a, she was a, like a swimming, like a butterfly style. Mm -hmm. That means that she jumped and then turned around to do butterfly. Is that how you do butterfly? You need yeah, like with this. both arms at the same time. Yeah, both arms same time. Oh, okay. So <coughs> these, these things though kind of like uh, uh, confused me. Um, also mm -hmm. confused me the fact that uh, um, the, the, the news, uh, this was a... Um, when he came up on the papers, I think, because I have I wasn't living in America, so I mm. I don't know if this was reported on the six as a woman missing. I mean, as a woman jumping in the mm. river without a name. Yeah. But I the the on the news on the newspaper uh, the news about Elena jumping on the river. Okay. The, the, the thought that Elena jumped on the river because of what she said, I belong to the water. Right. And that's what she said when she was uh, little. That's what the father oh, said. okay. Water. That is, that is the key yeah. that made the father believe that that was Elena. And that was the key that made the cops and FBI yeah. believe that. Hey, that's the girl, you know, she because if she said that, for sure it's her. But it mm -hmm. has never been and sure that that lady was Elena, the lady that jumped into the river, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so what you're saying is the description, he gets it wrong the first time, and maybe he made, so it makes it possible that he gets it wrong the second time. It, to you, yeah. it seems like the descriptions don't match between Elena and the, and the woman that he described going into the water. And Ramina, it, the mother, didn't... Uh, yeah. Okay. And also the dress that he described, that he, she thought that Elena didn't have a dress the way he described, or the shoes that he described. Mm. But I, I, to counter that, not to, not to be argumentative, but we know that she didn't have any clothes. You know, like you said, she was very minimalist. I guess it's possible that in those days she could have bought a dress and shoes, right? Um, I guess it's possible. It could. It could. Right. It could be possible. Okay. Yeah. All right. We just I have to yeah. have to be open to these things, uh, especially since it seems that if this happened on January sixth, and the last time that she spoke to her family was December thirty first, that would have given her a week. I mean, what do you know? It gives her a week maybe to buy other clothes, maybe. Yeah, but also makes me think that um, it's strange to wait a week call again her family mm -hmm. knowing that her mom was worried because at that point Romina knew that she was a Liddell, Liddell, yeah. Liddell whatever, yes. Liddell, uh, in New Orleans um, 
and also um, where was she all these um, days? Like, that's what a was good she question. Doing? That's a good question. If that was her that, that went into the water, then yes, where was she for those seven days? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, like, did anybody see her in those seven days? What, somebody reported an Italian person uh, that she was in this um, enoteca, like a um, store where they sell wine and beers, mm -hmm. that she went in uh, January 14th, around January 14th with somebody else to buy her favorite beer. He said, I'm, I am 100% sure that that was Elenia. And my friend um, was with me and he saw her too. Okay. I don't know if that's true, but that's what he said. He said in an, in an interview. Okay. Getting back to the security guard one more time. So your, it is your impression that as soon as he saw this woman go into the water, whether we believe it was Elena or somebody else, or maybe he made it up, he did call 911 very quickly. We don't know. I've never been told. I've no, never no. been... I don't know. Did you ever find any, <laughs> any news about no, it? No, I'm going to have to look. But I guess what, what I'm saying is... You know, it is uh, well, you know, maybe putting the cart between before the horse. I, I, you know, did he come forward with this, with this story about a woman going into the water after he found out that Lelania was missing, or did he come forward with this story about a woman going into the water before Elena was missing? I guess that's what I'm he, saying. It's hard, you know. He said, he, he, from what he said in the mm. interview, because there are a few interviews where you can hear him talking. Yeah. Uh, he said it right away. Okay. Now, uh, um, I don't know how many things changed yeah. in New Orleans in 30 years. But if um, the the police station didn't move, it's right behind the aquarium. Mm, it's very so, close there. Yeah, so I don't know, you know, if he said, uh, if we uh, notify somebody, you know, the, the cops will have been there like in minutes, within mm -hmm. minutes. But... No, to be honest, I don't know. He said that he has been uh, looking for this woman in the water for a bit, and then they could not find her, and then they called the cops, mm -hmm. and then there were, like, you know, boats and also helicopters looking for her. But okay. this has never been... Uh, I have never verified this. Okay. I'm going to... Once again, it's one of those things that I will look on newspapers.com and elsewhere in the run-up to this episode coming out. To verify this, because you uh, maybe you don't know this, Mina, but you know a lot of disappearances that I cover on for Unfound. You have a lot of people saying stuff that end, doesn't end up being true. They say they saw something or they heard something and everything, and you look into it and it's not true at all. And so I'm wondering, you know, is this guy just you know creating a story just to get attention for himself? Exactly, but also sometimes I think that these people that are. Um, the main person of the story, they make the story big and bigger mm. and bigger and add details and then they add things to make it bigger. Yeah, they do. Yes. You get more extravagant every, every time they tell a story. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that, so we have this guy who saw a woman go into the water. You can w believe whether it happened or not. That's up for the listeners to decide. And then on top of that, if you believe that it happened, was that Elena or not? That's up for everybody uh, to decide. Let's move on to this. Now, meaning maybe you su may be surprised by this, maybe the listeners aren't, that we have very few missing people that we feature on Unfound who have been declared deceased. It's a very, very small percentage. But Elena was declared deceased, and my understanding it was her father who initiated this. What, what do you know about that? I know that um, Albana decided to um, declare her um, deceased uh, 2014 or 16. You might have have you might have the right. Okay, date. but it's like 20 what, years 14? later. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because it's uh, there is a law in Italy that you can't declare somebody deceased if it's not 10 years yet. So. Uh, maybe I don't. I I don't know exactly when he did, but after mm. more than ten years, he um, declared her dead. Like okay. um, uh, sorry, deceased. 
just because um, that's, he said that that's what he believes, that uh, she jumped in the river. And uh, I, don't, I think of my perspective, knowing Albano, he's just tired of suffering, like yeah. hoping and, you know, um, people bothering him about Elenia all the time. Um, it's, yeah. it's just a pain for them. So he decided to do that, but not uh, Romina. Romina never wanted to believe that. Okay. I guess what you're also saying there in that comment a moment ago, you're saying that he did that on the strength of the security guard story back from 1994. Mm -hmm. He's thinking, well, that, yes, uh, Abano's saying, you know what, I think that was Elenia went into the water that that night. Of course, it's 20 years later, roughly, and, you know, no signs of her. So I'm going to choose to believe that that was she that went into the water, and that's why I'm declaring her deceased. Um, yeah, he, that, he said that he believes that because uh, he, when he heard... Um, the Guardian say that that lady that jumped in the water said, mm -hmm. I belong to water anyway. Mm -hmm. He thinks that that was his daughter drugged on drugs. Okay. And just either committed suicide or just, um, I don't know, jumping because she wasn't drugs. Okay. But that, that, that thing, those words that she said, that he said, that that lady said, mm -hmm. convinced him that that was Elenia. Okay. All right, so she's declared deceased, but like you said, uh, it sounds like Elena's mother uh, did not want to do that. No, she didn't. Uh, she wasn't. Well, they were, uh, I don't know if it, because they were divorced and so he could do and oh, okay. she, but he didn't agree and she thinks that Elena is uh, alive somewhere um, and being held. Okay. And by the way, to, to be clear about the date now that I'm seeing like uh, she was uh, declared deceased on 2013 exactly mm -hmm. 10 years after as I was right yeah because the mm -hmm. law says in it that you have to wait 10 years of somebody not finding the body or whatever to mm -hmm. you know in their deceased all right well 20 2003 or 2013 <laughs> 13 okay so 20. that would be 20 would be 20 years then 20 years okay it's, that that would yeah. be twenty years since she went missing then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, right. nineteen ninety three to twenty thirteen. That would be twenty years. Yes, and uh, I think that uh, she was uh, on on papers because it takes mm -hmm. a while. Okay. She was uh, officially declared disease on two thousand fourteen. Okay. All he right. presented the. Um, application for her to be declared disease in 2013 mm -hmm. and then officially she's declared she was declared dead 2014 okay all right so now of course uh just i was just we not that we covered a disappearance on the podcast but i had done a feature on youtube about a guy who was declared deceased from what was in indiana and he ended up being alive many many years later so wow. these these things happen here, at least here in the United States. So we'll move on to this. Uh, you mentioned this earlier, and it, it very well may be that people are thinking, well, she's from Italy and everything. She speaks like with in an accent, uh, you know, this very uh, exotic Italian accent that she would stick out in a crowd. But you're telling, you've told me she didn't have any uh, Italian accent at all. In fact, she sounded like what, a, a, a British person or no. American or American. She did. Yeah. She, okay. She didn't sound. Me, that's for sure. But she, <laughs> <laughs> she sounded uh, uh, American. I know for sure because uh, once, uh, I mean, I, you know, I can tell now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry, Sorry. But because I I speak English uh, quite well, I would say. Yeah, but, you uh, And I sure. speak up for so long, so I can tell maybe if somebody has an accent or not. But back that time. I, I could not know. I knew that Milenia spoke in English very well. It was almost mm. like her second language, but I could not tell if she had an accent, but she spoke mm. in the same, um, the same way her brother spoke English. When her brother speaks, he doesn't have an accent. And when I met mm. Yari long, long time ago, I think 20 years ago, um, 
it happened I was with my husband my husband is American like you okay. know he was born here was raised here okay so we I introduced him to my husband and they spoke a little bit you know we speak a little bit together exchanging a few words and then I asked my husband does he have an accent and he said no absolutely he sounds uh-huh. like he sounds American so now I know Okay. They both sound American, yeah. Okay. Uh, did Elena, of course, she knew Italian. Is there any other languages that she knew? She could yeah, speak? She's she spoken, like, uh, maybe four to five languages. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I know for So she's spoken Italian, English, uh, I think French, Spanish, maybe wow. Russian. Wow. Russian. Okay. Impressive. I guess yeah. what we're saying here is if we want to believe, we certainly can. We, I don't tell the listeners what to think. But if we were to believe that maybe she took off, I mean, we, we spent the, the good part of the, uh, this, uh, the beginning of this interview talking about how she wanted to be her own person and she maybe wanted to be out of the limelight. And she wanted to be free, even use the word libre, um, that maybe she just kind of took off. And I guess what we're saying is if she could sound like an American – it would be pretty easy for her to blend in in the United States somewhere. Pretty much, yes. Do also you, because um, the color of the skin and the hair and the eyes, yes. Yes. She can be, yeah, totally. Okay. All right. Although I think that maybe now if she's alive somewhere, um, mm-hmm. I think her hair might be darker. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I seen her hair already dark, much mm-hmm. darker before she disappeared. Mm-hmm. Right, and we have to remember she would be in her fifties. I'm fifty three. She would be right around my age, she and would be yeah, <laughs> and uh, maybe as I know, you know, so those gray hairs start creeping in. So she might have a totally different hair color altogether. Mm-hmm. Maybe, right? Maybe who knows? Yeah. yeah, maybe. I mean, it depends what's. Um, the situation, uh, mm. if she's alive, yeah. what she's in, like uh, a bad situation, then yes, yeah. gray hair, not good looking, you know, mm. she's still gorgeous probably, but <laughs> not, uh, you know, glowing like uh, uh, who, who she has been through. Right. And if fine, then maybe a few lines around mm. the eyes and, you know, maybe different color of hair. I have been thinking uh, about Elenia quite, quite often. And I also had dreams about her. Wow. Uh, she's a part of my life. Yeah. As, as much as a Yari and as much as uh, her mom and dad. You know, that's where mm. I was born. And when I also learned that mom and dad divorced after a few years of uh, her disappearance, I was hurt. Yeah. I was really, really sad. And I could see that sadness in Yari's eyes last time I saw him, which was just a few years before mm. they officially were divorced. Okay. But since when I moved to America, I have always been thinking about Elenia. Like, you know, any new city, mm. any new town I go to visit, I always think, like, who knows if I could have seen her here, if I can recognize her. <coughs> yes, I can. I would recognize Elenia with a lot of lines, wrinkles, <laughs> and no hair, with a hat, with sunglasses, because I can recognize her lips, teeth, yeah. nose, the color of the skin. I know her very well, you know. I mean, you see this person constantly in TV, yeah. in person, on newspaper, on pictures, that uh, is like printed in your eyes. Can't yeah. forget. Yeah. Have you... Um ever been to New Orleans to check out these locations that we've discussed during this interview? <laughs> yeah, once uh, it happened that uh, my mom, from Italy, of course, from Chilino San Marco, of course, um, and she knew, she didn't know Elena much, but she knew Yari. Uh, she came to visit me in Arkansas. I was living in Arkansas at uh, that time, um, I would say 15 years ago, and uh, or 13, something like that. Mm. Um, and so we, we traveled with my mom. She loved road trips. And we decided to do a road trip from Arkansas to Louisiana. Mm-hmm. That was our last stop. And my mom asked me specifically, can we please uh, drive or, 
no, we were riding a bus, I think, at that time, like uh, one of those um, uh, public uh, buses. Right. Like said, Greyhound or something. Oh. Yes. Okay. She said, can you please show me where, um, where was the hotel where she disappeared? And we, um, we, we passed by and I showed it to her. Um, I think at that time it was still open. I seen the sign. Okay. And then she wanted to see where was the place of where they think that they jumped. We spent quite a little time there. Like wow. in the, this uh, aquarium area. Okay. Um, to be honest, I mean, I know that this is not, you know, um, people cannot believe this or, you know, it's unbelievable. Uh, but I, when I was there, I never had uh, this feeling that uh, really, you know, something bad happened to her there mm. and she jumped. I always had the feeling that she was taken. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Not that my feeling counts, but... Yeah, well, it being that she was feeling. around Alexander and, uh, you know... It, you know, maybe you know it now, maybe you didn't know it back in 1994 when this all happened, but New Orleans is one of the most violent cities in the United States. You know, next to like Chicago, it's like number two, I think, even today. I didn't know. I yeah. thought it was in Philadelphia, though. No? No, well, Philadelphia is no treat either. But New Orleans also is known as being like the most corrupt city in the United States as well. That doesn't help. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yes. I don't even know Elena knew that, but... Yeah, it is. It is. It's been, it's a lot, of course, this came out when Katrina hit, the hurricane hit New Orleans, and it really exposed a lot of this. But, uh, yeah, very, very corrupt city, even to this day, very violent city, for sure. So this is so also Elena, something. Elena disappeared in uh, 1993, yeah. 94, and yeah. Katrina was in 95, right? 2005. 10 years later. Oh, 11, year, 11 years later. Oh, okay. The big one, years. like this. Right. Yeah, Katrina hit in 2005. That's when uh, I was uh, living in Las Vegas at the time when that happened. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, 2005. So yeah. Um, let's get right to this. I'll just po ask you point blank. Uh, how has this affected you? Of course, you talked about, you know, your feelings seeing her in dreams. How has this affected you for the last 30 years? Uh, in many ways. Uh, mm -hmm. as a friend, um, as a woman, kind of, uh, mm, right now that I, I, before I think that was just very like, um, uh, heart, mm, I was hurting because the mom and the dad, because of her, that, yeah. you know, I was really afraid that something bad happened to her and she had to go through something really, uh, violent and, I, I, I was very sad and uh, then of course you know after a long time you you don't really think about her every day but um, after I became a mom well, they kind right. of you know always think about right thing happening to my daughter as uh, you know something happened to Elena like anything can happen to you know the person that really feels like so safe and big and powerful because I think Elena always, and I did too, like, you know, in the past when I was her age, you, you think you're like, um, um, like nobody can do anything to you. Indestructible. Strong, Indestructible. Indestructible. Like, yeah. um, you never think that, you know, the impossible could happen to you. Right. Like, like me, for example, uh, I, I, when I had mom and dad, I always felt so strong and, uh, nothing could happen to me until my father passed away. And I was like, whoa, what? Yeah. How, why did this, you know, happen to me? You know, like I was yeah. young, I was 27. So, you know, I don't know. I just, you know, every time I, my daughter tells me like, I would like to go, you know, to, do like a road trip uh, i'm like oh gosh I'm like you know i'm like on my knees praying like please god you know <laughs> like i can't change her mind I, I really get scared because yeah. that really kind of uh um digged into my mind like you know wow you know how do, and i to be honest i've been travel i have been traveling by myself um at 
Pennsylvania's age. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm lying. I'm sorry. I was all there. Okay. Uh, 23, I wasn't traveling. I think I started traveling when I was 25. Um, but only one time I was solo in Thailand, but I always was surrounded by people because I wanted, I wanted to become a scuba diving instructor. And I always, I was never, almost never by myself. You know, I was always with uh, co-workers or um, friends and, you know, I, I, I was afraid to be alone. And then I was more afraid for my daughter. Um, I'm, I still I am. Like, you know, I try to always tell her this story about my friend Elenia and stuff. And, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't leave this story, like, you know, personally. So they're like, uh-huh, yeah, right. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, they, this, they don't think, they can't believe, you know, that, you know, something bad really can happen to you. Um, wherever mm. you you know you go like i don't know it's just mm. like and um rather than that you know i just you know most of the time i deeply think about her parents now yeah especially mom um i see her appearing in tv and she's not <laughs> she's not the same person mm. i even albano they are not the same yeah couple they 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 got separated and then eventually divorced. Yari is not the same person. Yari suffered very, very, very much. Mm. Elenia was the, like, a, you know, an idol for him. Yeah. It was an example to follow. You yes. Know? Yeah, they were like twins. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I see this in her parents all the time. And her parents, like, a pretty popular like even more now than like you know 10 years ago because for a while they disappeared uh, not disappeared completely mm -hmm. but they just didn't want to be um you know in tv or uh, in public and now they are like uh, they split up they divorced um i think uh, uh, romina when they divorced came back to america she was living here for yeah, a while she was. okay uh, but we didn't know if she came back here and looking for Elena. We didn't. We don't know. And um, the father eventually um, met another woman, and he had two more kids with this woman. Oh, he did. Okay. Um, and so the public is not happy about it. <laughs> we don't want Albano with another. Right, woman. right, we right. Mina Power. And we love the picture of Romina Power and her own kids. Yeah. And we would love Il Elena to be included, you know. So, yeah. um, I just I just feel terrible. I know Romina still hopes that Elena is alive. I do think also that Elena is alive. Sometimes I think maybe she's not alive anymore, but I don't think that she is a lady in the river. If she is not alive, it happened that something bad happened separate from that story, like aside from that story. Okay. The river, so. All right. Is there, uh, you know, I don't know if, uh, once again, uh, Elena's disappearance has been covered all, by a lot of different people on YouTube elsewhere over the last 30 years, of course, because of her parents, because of... You know, uh, you know, uh, a person from outside of the United States disappearing inside the United States, that's always going to get a lot of attention. Um, but do you have your own, like, Facebook page or anything that you manage for her disappearance? What, you know, if so, why don't you let people know about it now? Um, no, I, I don't because okay. I don't, I okay. don't feel entitled to do anything like that. I, okay. I decided on my own to post pictures of Elenia on groups. I didn't mm -hmm. even know about the existence of these uh, groups and um, I found them and I, I thought this would be a great idea of just like letting people know about Elenia's image, face, picture, yeah. if anybody ever seen her. But every I tried and every time these links to her parents and I think that... Um, that is what uh, kind of uh, takes people away from, you know, paying attention to Elena, her face right. disappearing. 
they concentrate on they whenever they they read about Elenia, they start reading about her parents. Yeah. The parents, um, father, you know, Tyrone Power, I think it was said. Uh, That's right. And her grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. And then they forget about Elenia. And I'm like, why? You know, I get a little upset because I'm I, like, I, I always think like you have to concentrate about the story of Elenia. But then also, every material that uh, does exist here in America all talk about Elenia uh, being linked with the woman jumping the river and the father declared her deceased. And then people are like, oh, yeah, she died then. Yeah. Right. For sure. That was her. And then. Everything ends there. Everything, you know, yeah. dies. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Because, you know, we are not sure that that was Elenia. And she might have, she might be alive. And yep. she deserves people to look for her. I agree with you. If All she's alive. This is, the van, this is the main reason we do these interviews the way we do them. That we look at all the angles. You know, we cover all the facts. I and we don't tell and, what and people to, what to glad, think. Yeah. I'm glad that you actually um, <clears throat> take care of these, you know, um, stories and develop the situations on your own because uh, sometimes I really think that a lot of people are missing and uh, it's, they don't talk about that much, mm. you know, like uh, people like Elena, for example. I always mm. remember, like, my friends always telling me, like, oh, come on, shut up. She's been gone for 30 years, you know. These are the my friends in Italy. But I always, because they don't live here, I always uh, um, compare the story of Amanda Berry and uh, mm, what's the, the other girl that it was, Dugard. It was, uh, yeah, J.C. Dugard, Elizabeth Smart, the women that Smart. were taken by Ariel Castro, yeah. So why not? Why this couldn't be my friend, you know? And and maybe I just what I'm hoping is like the people can recognize her face, and somehow they will come up saying, "Oh my goodness, I remember this girl. I seen her in New Orleans. She was doing this and this and that, or she was with this person, or whatever." Because. Like, when I think about all the times that, you know, they talk about in TV, the parents, you know, um, the parents talked or whatever, to me, they don't really, you know, click together. Like, you know, she she called them the, the 31st, but then she's been noticed missing or been seen the last time on the 6th and then reported on the 14th. There is a big gap. Yeah, there is. And there is so, a big gap. It's, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with that's once again yeah. why I tried to do these uh, interviews as in depth as we can to kind of get inside. Of course, it's 30 years ago. I realized that things are going to be forgotten and lost and, and, and all, you know, a bunch of other things put together over the years. So we try to fill in those blanks as best we can. And so, and understanding a timeline that she called her parents on December 31st, and then two weeks later, she says she's leaving the hotel, but no, Alexander didn't leave the hotel until two weeks later. And then in the meantime, the security guard tells the story about a woman going into the water. I mean, that's all, that's going to be for the listeners to decide whether it happened or not, the way he described it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of empty spaces in there, and unfortunately, they may never get filled in. All we can do is our best. That, uh, I, I, I would like to say this. Another thing that really kind of shocked me is that uh, why didn't Masakela report Elena missing mm -hmm. when, he, when you know, he noticed that she didn't come back to the hotel? Yeah. Was that something malicious? Yeah, but it could be. Could be. He, he didn't care at all? I mean, I don't know. Like, could be. Uh, my best insight would be he doesn't seem like the type of guy who is looking out for anybody but himself. Uh, you know, certainly did not have, even if they weren't having sex and everything else, nobody really believes that he had Elena's best interests at heart. No. Right? Elena was so. having sex with him because I know Elena very well. She will never have sex with him. Yeah. If she was having sex with him, she was drugged. Yeah. So, so there is no way 
I would have sex with that such a person. And then also in Italy, when they covered this story, there was like a huge uh, news at the beginning of the you know disappearance. Um, there is a, a TV show called Kila Visto. Okay. And Kila Visto is a pretty much like um, honest and serious um, TV show. They don't they don't lie because they talk about missing persons. Like it's almost like you, you whatever you do, but they do on TV in a okay. program. No? Yeah. So uh, they got in touch with one of the ex of um, Master Kayla, mm -hmm. ex girlfriend, on the phone, where she stated that once she was almost like brainwashed or drugged whatever because he would uh, they asked her like uh, did he drug you and she said i don't know but he would pass me drinks all the time mm -hmm. and she was confused she said that she wanted to go back to her family but somehow she could not she had no the power the willing the will to just go she was held in the house raped and drugged by masakela well, those are serious allegations. I just wonder if they're true or not. You know, I know what she's saying, but, you know, uh, if this were true, why isn't he in jail? And, it, it, I mean, we don't... No, but she said that in Italy. She didn't say yeah, that in America. Yeah, I don't know why she forced that to America. Oh, I think, hold on, hold on. I think that today you asked her, like, why didn't you report him? Because, and she said, because I was afraid that they, they would not believe me. Mm -hmm. She was probably... But, uh, like, you know, um, maybe she was like a prostitute or whatever. Maybe. You know what I mean? Maybe. Because he was, was hanging out with this type of people. I mean, looking at Masakela and see the life he was doing, we cannot believe he was a saint. Nope. No, we can't. No, we can't. Yeah. No, we can't. Yeah. So. Uh, Mina, any final words before we complete this interview? Well, I just really hope that... Um, God brought you to me uh, for a reason, yeah. and that yes. somebody anywhere will listen this uh, our conversation, and eventually you will link this conversation conversation to Elenia's image picture, at many pictures maybe, and recognize her um, somehow. Uh, mm -hmm. Or does know any detail, any news, any minimal detail, anything, any information about Elenia or Masakela, or mm -hmm. actually not about Masakela, but just about Elenia because who cares about Masakela? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, about well, Elenia, yeah. Or Masakela said that maybe Masakela said about Elenia. I don't know any information that can link us to. Elenia and bring us to the truth, to whatever yeah. whatever happened to Elenia for real. Yeah. Mina, thank you for being on this episode of Unfound. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, hopefully we'll receive um, an information. Um, thank you for what you do, and uh, I wish everybody happiness and peace and love. Thank you. And you're welcome. And that was my February 15th, 2024 interview with Mina Spencer, friend of Elenia Carissi. I thank Mina for joining me and all of you on this episode. I made a video detailing the important locations for Elenia's disappearance. You can now find it on Unfound's YouTube channel. I also do some analysis of the case. This disappearance is very straightforward. If you believe the security guard Albert Cordova and think the woman was Elenia, she got taken downstream and she drowned. Very easy to understand. And no, if this happened, whether the woman was Elenia or not, I don't find it suspicious that no body was ever found. It was night, the Mississippi River is very fast. The river is wide. The quickest rescue team could have gotten out there in maybe 20 minutes. Very, very difficult conditions. However, and bizarrely, 
The body of a man was found while searching for the woman Cordova claimed to have seen. So we may ask, are we sure Mr. Cordova saw a woman go into the water? Hmm. Yet, if we don't believe Cordova, then just about anything is possible for Elena's disappearance. Walk off, murder, suicide somewhere else, virtually anything. So, are there rational reasons to doubt Cordova's story? By me looking at the accounts of what he said transpired, I think there are although nothing at this point 30 years later is 100%. And what doesn't help us is that he is deceased. Warning, math ahead. What first hit me when learning about Cordova's account of that night is Cordova said the woman was 100 yards out into the center of the river, and yes, he said 100 yards, when she drowned and he makes it sound like that happened in seconds. Yet, there is no way the woman could have made it 100 yards out into the river that quickly. In fact, I would say there's no way anyone could get out there 100 yards that quickly. And to be clear, he did not say downstream 100 yards. He pointed out into the middle of the river, if you've watched any videos of him being interviewed. He points out into the middle of the river. He does not point downstream. Do you know how long it takes to swim 100 yards? The world record for swimming 100 meters, so 109 yards, and of course this would be in a swimming pool, is about 47 seconds. Did Cordova really stand there for easily over a minute watching the woman struggle in the water. Would not the normal reaction be to run to the nearest phone within 15 seconds, 20 seconds? We also have to remember that while this woman would be trying to swim out into the middle of the river, the current would be taking her downstream. So how fast is the current of the Mississippi River? Well, I checked. Three miles an hour on average in the New Orleans area. Meaning, as the woman is trying to get to the middle of the river, the water is taking her downstream at 4.4 feet per second. So let's say it would take the average healthy 23-year-old 90 seconds to swim 100 yards out into the middle of the river. What would be happening, though, in the meantime, is that 23-year-old is getting taken downstream. So that 90 seconds multiplied by the flow rate of 4.4 feet per second means that the person would be 360 feet downstream before reaching a point 100 yards away from shore. Do you think Cordova or anyone else would be able to see a person in the water 100 yards away from shore and 120 yards, 360 feet, downstream in the Mississippi River at night. It sounds somewhat improbable. Even if we were to think that he is exaggerating and that she was only 50 yards away from shore, it's still somewhat improbable. Moreover, and really this is more important, there is nothing public that has helped me determine when Albert Cordova came forward with his story. Did he call 911 on January 6th when he saw a woman go into the water? Did he have a walkie-talkie to alert someone in the guard control room to call 911? Or did he not come forward until he saw the news that Elena was missing. This is a huge, huge deal. And despite all the talk about him and him doing interviews at the time in 1994, there is nothing concrete either way. Here is my experience. If Cordova had called 911 on January 6th to say he saw a woman go into the water, 
I think it would have been said in the articles concerning Elena's disappearance. Why? Because this would give the overall story a lot of believability. Yet, there is nothing in any of the articles about Cordova calling 911 on January 6th. Also, I looked everywhere. I could not find any story published between January 6th and January 30th of 1994 about an unidentified woman going into the Mississippi in the New Orleans area. So, if Cordova did alert authorities that night of January 6th, why didn't that story make the news? You would think that is exactly the kind of story that would make the news. I think you see what I'm saying here. There are many reasons from all sorts of angles to doubt the security guard's story. Although I admit, nothing definitive. So, I guess we'll all continue to struggle to figure out what happened to Elena. Much like a woman or man in the water who can't swim. If you'd like to hear and read more of my in-depth analysis into the disappearance of Elena Carissi, please go to patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast, sign up, and then partake in the Unfound blog. Until then, I leave the public theorizing up to you. And that's the program. Right now, while you are in your podcast platform, Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, wherever, give Unfound a five-star review, a thumbs up, whatever that platform allows. I thank you for listening. I'm Ed Denzel. And you've just finished this episode of Unfound.